Is this the greatest plugin ever made? Probably. What's up dogs, it's Cameron with Venus Theory, and in this video we are here to start talking about UVI Falcon. So Falcon, in case you have been under a rock, is the juggernaut of a synth and sampler that is just probably the coolest thing ever. I I love Falcon to death. I it's just it's replaced so many different things I use in my workflow and it's just awesome all around. I cannot recommend this plugin enough. So in this video, we're going to take a look at building your first thing in Falcon. And just to talk about setting things up, uh, the effects and, you know, kind of what everything is and how to put it together. So in this video, I just kind of wanted to take a look at both the synth and sampler sections and effects and tying stuff together to give you enough to go on to start making something cool. And as the series goes along, we'll be looking at certain things in more specific detail, but this should be a good starting point to help you understand how and where and why and plugging stuff in. So let's get started. All right, guys. So in this video, we're here to take a look at UVI Falcon and how to build your first thing. So this is just a video demonstrating how, why, and where things hook up in Falcon and what you can do with them. So in today's example, we're going to be building kind of a basic instrument and then adding on to it to demonstrate the different capabilities that Falcon has. So let's go ahead and get started by just building a basic synthesizer. We're going to make a respace and add stuff to it to turn it into more of a pad drony thing. Um, so when you open Falcon, this is what you see. We get a new multi that's completely empty. So in the info tab here, we get our wrench, which allows us to adjust the macros and such, which we will be adding later. And the info button, which allows you to add information about your instrument thing. So first things first, we're going to need to go to the edit tab to open up what we want to do. So to make a new synth uh, little preset thing here, you can click down here in the key map and hit control N or command N. This opens an analog oscillator with the key group and we're all set. So in here, we can see the structure of Falcon. We have the program level, the layer level, the key group level, and the oscillators. So all of this um, allows you for a lot of possibilities to do a lot of very crazy things, which I'll probably go into more detail in, in later videos. But we're going to start things off with just a basic respace. So to get started, to add more oscillators, we're going to go to the oscillator browser here. So we can start with a sample or a synth. So I'm going to grab another analog oscillator, drag it over here, and boom, away we go. So now we can go ahead and set these to be saw waves because we know we want to make a respace of some kind, and we're pretty much all set. So I can go ahead and tune down an octave right there. And now we can go ahead and unlink these two oscillators because they're both down an octave and they're all set, but we're going to need to detune them. You could do this with the voices here, but just for the sake of demonstrating, this is how we're going to do it. So we're going to fine tune up about 22 cents and we get a nice respace. So cool, away we go. We can go ahead and maybe detune even more. Cool. So that sounds good. So now we can go ahead and get into effects. Once we've got our sound set up, a sample or a synth, um, go over to the effects browser here and go to the effects tab. So Falcon comes with over 80 built-in effects and they're all really awesome and do a lot of cool things. And again, I'll probably dive into this in more detail in later videos. So in the case of a respace, we're gonna want a couple things, something to provide modulation and movement and some kind of filter. So we're gonna start things off by opening up the filter here and we're gonna grab an analog filter. This is gonna be set to low pass by default, which is perfect, and we get a cutoff. So we can go ahead and just play the filter now. Neat. So I know I'm gonna to wanna to control this. So what I could do is right click and assign to macro, add new macro. Macros are added to the info tab of your little instrument guy here. So we can go ahead and hit our wrench icon to edit this. So we'll go ahead and call this low pass cut. All right, and we could drag it up here so things are nice and tidy. So cool, and now this is already mapped, so I can go ahead and move this around. And that moves my low pass filter. How awesome is that? So we need some kind of modulation. So we're gonna go ahead and grab an analog chorus. We'll put that before the filter here. And we can set the speed to something nice and low with probably about there should be fine. Intensity, no transient enhancement, and we get this. Cool. 
So from here you have a couple other tabs I'm just going to go over, but we're not going to be using them in this video. Multiple effects right here are little quick effects racks, so we could open up bass, uh, electric bass, and we could growl electronic bass. So this adds a couple just different presets that you can just drag on for a quick thing. So cool, but we don't really need that. So. That is multi-effects. Over here we have the scripts or processors or events. So this is your arpeggiator. Um, you can get extra scripts. You can do all sorts of stuff. You can write your own. Super fun stuff. Finally we get into modulation. So we get different envelopes and LFOs and all sorts of fun stuff. So we are going to go ahead and add one more effect to demonstrate how LFOs and stuff work because that's a pretty important thing for a lot of sounds. So we're going to go ahead and grab a comb filter. And we're going to up the resonance so it's actually doing something. And we want the cutoff to move around based on an LFO. So we can go in here and we can actually move this comb filter down to just this layer. So we're going to just grab a comb filter effects on this layer. So this is layer one and we're going to be adding another layer here in a minute. Now we can go into our modulation sources. We'll grab an LFO. Alrighty. <clears throat> and then in the tree view here. We can go ahead and find our LFO. So this is going to be under layer one. And here's our LFO. We're going to drag this onto the comb filter cutoff. And it's going to move around. So we can adjust our depth to be not so extreme and all the way. Adjust the cutoff. All right. Set the frequency to be lower. And increase the resonance slightly so it does something. And now we have a bass that's got a good chorus. Uh, some reverb. And some other stuff going on. Or chorus and a filter rather so we're all set with our first part of this sound so since this is a bass sound we would just uh, go to our layer here we could set this to mono portamento add a bit of glide and we're done but since this is also going to turn to a pad we're going to leave this to be polyphonic and we're going to get started with a sampler now this is where things get really really fun in falcon so in our list view over here, this is important. This is where a lot of the stuff you need to do is. So we can go ahead and name our program. So we'll call this my first thing. Cool. Now we can add a layer. So we're going to hit the plus icon. This adds a new layer. To keep things organized, we're going to name these. So this is going to be Reese thing. And this is going to be sample. Cool. So now we get a whole other layer. So this has all of its own effects and modulation except for the program level. So the chorus and the filter are going to apply to both of these layers. So that's why you would use the program level. The layer level, um, as I demonstrated in the Reese part here, I can do just one layer with effects and modulation or a key group if you have multiple key groups, which that's probably a later video. So now we can go ahead and grab a different oscillator. So we're going to do IRCAM multigranular, drag this over here, and away we go. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a piano here. Just a little one shot. So this is at A1. So we're going to set our root to be A1. Cool. And now we can go ahead and adjust this a bit. So when we have multiple layers, something that's handy is to click the solo checkbox here. So we can only hear this layer and start working on it. So I know that this is going to be a pad, so I'm going to want this to loop. So we'll set it to loop forward. Cool. And now we can start adjusting this. Cool. So we're starting to get somewhere. So we can go ahead and just change our start point here and our end point. There we go. So now we've got a nice droney layer here. So from here, we could go ahead and maybe add another multi granular and let's grab a different type of sound. Let's go ahead and try uh, maybe a tuba and maybe something a bit brighter How about a violin. <laughs> Cool. So this is going to be C sharp four. So we'll do C sharp four. Excellent. Now we can go and do the same thing. So we're going to add some voices some position spread time spread. We'll do size up a bit density. Sure. Add some pitch variation for some detuning about like so. 
And that should be good. Drag this back, drag this forward. We'll add a loop mode and we get this. Cool. So in this key group, this only affects this key group, we can go ahead and add some attack to this so it's going to fade in. Cool. Let's make it a bit more intense, about a second. Cool. And then we're going to do the same thing to our Reese here. So we'll up this attack about one second. And since this is polyphonic, it's going to be able to make big, luscious chords and pads. So we'll go ahead and uncheck the solo here, and we can go ahead and play these together. So that's pretty intense. And then from here, we could adjust uh, the balance of everything. So this key group, we could actually this layer, we go ahead and turn the Reese layer down. It's a bit much. And blend those together a bit. That should be decent. So now we can go ahead and start doing some more effects here. So this is going to apply at the program level. So this is everything. So that's perfect. We're going to add, uh, let's do a dual delay. And we'll set this to be a stereo delay, dub utility. And then let's grab ourselves a nice big reverb. Let's do spark verb because spark verb makes everything sound cool. Add platinum here. Something about like so should be good. And then we should be all set with our first thing of some kind and adjust our low pass. So we can go ahead and MIDI learn this. There we go. And now we can go ahead and play some big luscious chords. So that is a rudimentary view on how Falcon works and how to start setting things up. So I hope this is enough information for you guys to go off of to start making things within Falcon. As we go along with this series, we'll get into a lot more detail about cool things and how to design things a little more specific, you know, a big narrow base patch and, you know, big droney epic pads and such. So anyways, that will do it for this video. And that's it for this video guys, so thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. As always, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.